Good afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Juju Jets Show. And the New York Jets recently let go of offensive coordinator Mike LaFleur, meaning we got to replace him with somebody. So who should that somebody be? Let's go ahead and talk about it. Now, what the New York Jets need to be looking for in our new offensive coordinator is someone who has experience at calling plays and has ran a successful offense before. I don't want the New York Jets to go out and hire a hotshot position coach who has ties to a brilliant offensive mind in the NFL because that's what Mike LaFleur is supposed to be, and he was came two years after getting the job. So the New York Jets just need to go out and get somebody who has done it before and can do it again. Starting off with our former head coaches, with Frank Reich being the first guy on the list. Now, Reich does have some ties to the New York Jets, as him and Joe Douglas both spent time on the Philadelphia Eagles together. The only problem with Reich is that he might get a head coaching job, but only one team out of everyone that has an opening at head coach has interviewed him, and that team being the Carolina Panthers. So chances are he doesn't get a head coaching job, and he returns back to the offensive coordinator position. And hopefully the New York Jets at least interview Reich, because no matter where he has been he's always seemed to have a producing offense and what he is what he did in Indianapolis was impressive because Reich had a new quarterback every single season he was a head coach in Indianapolis along with having some pretty mediocre talent on the offensive side of things and managed to take them to the playoffs two at times and have at least a solid offense with them and if you put Reich on the New York Jets a team that has some very young superstars and hopefully a solid quarterback that we acquire this offseason he could really make some magic with our offense. The next former head coach we have on the list is Gary Kubiak who has ties to Robert Sala as they both spent time in Houston together. Now Kubiak is a brilliant offensive mind he has an excellent track record of running awesome offenses. The only problem with Kubiak is that he has no plans to come out of retirement, according to Rich Semeny, and it's very hard to get somebody to come out of retirement. So unless Robert Sala can do it, I don't think Kubiak's going to be the New York Jets offensive coordinator. And the last former head coach I have on my list is Nathaniel Hackett. Now the Hackett experiment in Denver went horrible. Their offense was historically bad. Russell Wilson had a huge digression and Hackett didn't even get to finish his first season as the Broncos head coach. They fired him before the season ended. But as an offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett has an excellent track record. I mean, as the Packers offensive coordinator and Rodgers won two MVPs under him, Hackett was the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive coordinator whenever they had that excellent 2017 team that reached the AFC Championship, that saw Blake Bortles playing some excellent football, and even earned him a contract extension, which he definitely did not deserve. But Nathaniel Hackett is a good offensive coordinator. He's shown it before, just not so much as a head coach. Then moving on to our next tier of potential offensive coordinator candidates, and that is experience play callers. Now, the first guy I have on my list is Greg Olson, who is currently a senior offensive assistant with the Los Angeles Rams. He has ties to the New York Jets because him and Salah spent time together in Jacksonville. And I forgot to mention, but Salah and Nathaniel Hackett also spent time in Jacksonville together as well. But one thing Greg Olson has done time and time again in his career is develop quarterbacks. He was Drew Brees' quarterback coach in college. Derek Carr's played his best career football with Olson as his offensive coordinator. And he's just has had plenty of experience as a quarterback coach and as an offensive coordinator he has an excellent track record I mean he's just had so many offenses play so many well with him as their offensive coordinator and with Derek Carr being a potential trade target for the New York Jets this offseason having his former offensive coordinator on the team definitely could help get Derek Carr to the big Apple. Next guy I have on my list is Daryl Bevel, who is currently the Dolphins quarterback coach and passing game coordinator. Now, Bevel has ties with Robert Sala as the two spent time together in Seattle. Now, Bevel has a lot of experience developing quarterbacks and just with quarterbacks in general. I mean, first off, the dude knows what a good quarterback looks like as he helped scout Russell Wilson, and he even was one of the few scouts that attended his pro day. Brett Favre had a career year under Bevel, and Tua Tagovailoa also had a career year with Bevel this season as well. He also has experience as a head coach. He was an interim coach for the Detroit Lions after they fired Matt Patricia and an interim coach with the Jacksonville Jaguars after they fired Urban Meyer. And he also has had a lot of success as an offensive coordinator in the league. And the final guy I have on my experience play caller list is Brian Johnson, who is currently the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback coach. Now, Johnson does not have 
any ties to the New York Jets, and he has also never had any NFL play calling experience, but he has had a successful career as a college play caller. I mean, with Houston, with Florida, offenses just seem to produce with him at the helm. And he also has had a lot of experience with quarterbacks. I mean, Jalen Hurts emerged as a superstar with Johnson as his quarterback coach. Dak Prescott had his best clue collegiate years with Johnson as his quarterback coach and we've seen how he's played in the NFL. I know this season wasn't exactly great for Dak Prescott but he's definitely played like a top 10 quarterback in the NFL in the past and Kyle Trask also had a really good collegiate career with Johnson as his offense coordinator and it even led to him being a second round pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Of course of them having no ties to the New York Jets might not lead to him getting the job but he definitely is an intriguing candidate for the coordinator job. And the last guy I have on my list isn't someone who has a former head coach or isn't a former offensive coordinator, which is making me sound like a hypocrite right now, but he's an intriguing candidate. And this guy is, of course, Dave Canales, the Seattle Seahawks quarterback coach. Now, the interesting thing with Canales is that he's been with Pete Carroll since 2009, 10 plus years with Pete Carroll. I mean, he's been with Carroll since his USC days. I mean, he's just been with Carroll for a very long time. And he also has a very awesome knowledge of the offense. I mean, he was a former college wide receiver. He's coached the receiver's position. He's been a passing game coordinator and a quarterback's coach. He's definitely intriguing. He's not the top person on my list, not the first person I would want the New York Jets to go after or to interview, but he is an intriguing candidate and I would not be mad if the New York Jets hired him. But if I were to pick someone for the New York Jets to go with for the offense coordinator job, I would definitely pick Greg Olson just because he has an excellent track record of not only developing quarterbacks, which would be huge for Zach Wilson, but at calling plays and running awesome offenses. And he of course has the connections with Derek Carr. But yeah, that's all my potential offensive coordinator candidates for the New York Jets. All the guys I would like to see them hire. Anyone else? Not super high on, but yeah. Tell me, let me know down below who you want to, the New York Jets to hire as our offensive coordinator. And I'm your host, Stuart, signing off for now. See you guys later. Peace.